it's 3.05, why don't we go ahead and get started? <clears throat> Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we will call the meeting to order. And as part of virtual meetings, I think we need to have a um, roll call done verbally, correct? So we'll start with uh, Shar Douglas. Are you there? I can see you. Present. Alex Pike. Present. Tom McGannon, also present. And we're awaiting Pete. Um, and Julie, you are here. Is there anyone anyone else from the, that's joined us or that indicated they wanted to be part of this meeting from online? Uh, there were no public comments online. Okay, great. And uh, Carol said there were no calls, um, but now we're streaming, so people may be watching. They're not invited to be in the Zoom. So this is a a, a recording. Or being recorded. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sharp. Yeah. Do, will Mark List be joining us? And and that was my next thing. He just um, sent an email. He's got um, a medical issue to deal with, and so he will not be joining us. Okay. Thanks. Uh, but uh, I also received an email from our new city manager, Paul Brake, and he is interested in connecting with all of you, and he is going to try to be on the call. Um, at some point today, and if not, then um, we've got the July 8th, uh, second Wednesday of uh, July held, it's penciled in for a meeting and um, perhaps he could be at that one with us. Okay, great. All right, <clears throat> we'll continue to move through our agenda. Um, since there is not a public comment, we'll look at the minutes from our meeting of May 13 and review and I'll ask for either corrections, additions, or approval of those minutes. Seeing none, we'll keep moving. I'll, uh, all in favor of approving our minutes to file, please, uh, actually we have to do by roll call. Um, Sharp? You need a motion and a second. I motion. I second. Great motion, second. All in favor, say aye. And this is where we do the roll call. Sorry about that. Okay, Char, are you are you in favor or? Yes. And Alex, how about you? I am as well. And I also approve. So the three of us, it carries. Thank you. All right, next up, we'll review the document on our financials. Julie had noted that the uh, contribution from the construction company was not yet um, incorporated in that because of it was still sitting in the 700 account correct that is correct okay so um, this is quick review and uh, uh, no motions required here we'll move down next into a uh, review and adoption of the agenda any additions to our current agenda or topics that have come up that need to be added um, yes I'd like to uh, request that we make some time for the insurance uh, quotes that I sent through yesterday. Okay, so we'll, we would consider that new business and we'd add that as item number 15 and move, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, yeah, we, if we put, it, put that as 15 and then we'll put our agenda as our final topic today. Yep. Okay. I so move. Is there a second? second? All right, those in, uh, we'll go forward for a vote. Shar? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'll say aye as well. All right, uh, moving right along. Director's report, Julie. Okay, let's see. So um, there was a number of operational items uh, worked on. Um, the biggest one I would say is um, for our the discussion of the kickoff with additional staff and uh, Char Douglas, um, there were also um, connections made again with the insurance company that resulted in the quotes that we'll talk about. Uh, we have the final version of our logo, as you can see on the screen from OCC. Um, we're still waiting on the letterhead to be designed. Uh, there was a, a situation with uh, the proper software not being available for them. So 
um, uh, Peter Shady is um, looking for that right now. Um, I was able to get my email associated with the PayPal account. And uh, so when donations are made, I am getting a notification of that and I'm saving them all in a particular folder so we have access to those people. Um, and I wanted to mention that uh, one of the first that I saw was a donation that came from um, a young boy's um, grandparents. So his grandparents were, were giving him some money and he decided he wanted to send it to the animal shelter. So that note is attached and I was thinking that might be something that we would want to feature at our kickoff, you know, with, you know, this tagline that I kind of like that everybody can be a philanthropist, right? And, and like so um, uh, we can talk a little bit more about that, Char, and maybe put that in a, a kickoff program parking lot and just see if there is a way to maybe interview him or have a picture of him and his grandparents or uh, he and his mom, something like that. Or maybe the director of the animal shelter. I think we could you know, think of something neat to do. Um, and then I am working on setting up Amazon Smiles, which is, you know, community rewards kind of um, a revenue stream. It's, it's not huge, but if people sign up when before they're making an order on Amazon and choose Royal Oak Civic Foundation, uh, there is a percentage of whatever the total of that sale is that would come back to us. So there's, um, you know, no cost to us and it's, it's a, a form of charity revenue. So I'll, I'll continue pressing on that. Sorry, sir. Let us know when you do that. I'll switch mine over immediately. Okay. All right. So I'll just say that the issue that I'm where I am right now is that they require a um, bank account routing number. Oh. And, and so we have to figure out what we want to do with that. Yeah. And um, so, you know, right now I, I see two things that could happen. If the city is willing to allow their one of their bank account numbers to be used, you know, that's an easy fix. If they're not, then we may have to discuss setting up a, a checking account only for, I mean, right now only for Amazon donations. And then we have to figure out if we do that, what does that mean for future audits where we have the bulk of our money in one place and, you know, $175 in another place and is it worth it? So that may be next month's question to you all, you know, once I figure out what our options are with the Amazon smiles. Makes my but, head. Um, yeah, I know. So at, um, you know, the, the PTA, uh, you know, again, I've been the treasurer for the PTA uh, for four years in a row and we've had, um, you know, maybe $500 come to um, each of them from Amazon Smile. So again, it's not a huge amount of money, but in some ways it seems, you know, not prudent to leave money on the table. So anyway, I will check into it and see, see if it makes sense for us to press on that one. And, and then just standard administrative stuff. Um, so that's it. I wonder if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Just great work. Thank you. All right, Julie, thank you for your report and stuff. <clears throat> thank you. All right, uh, next up on the agenda is discussion of a software purchase, uh, the software that you're, you research is QuickBooks. Right, so now as a 501c3, we have access to the um, nonprofit TechSoup. Uh, which is a nonprofit that helps nonprofits with technology, all kinds, software, hardware, et cetera. And um, they have uh, an offering of TechSoup, or sorry, an offering of QuickBooks for $60 um, for the actual hardware or software that's a download. So it's not cloud-based. It's something that, you know, we can load on a couple computers. And what I was thinking is, um, you know, back to the idea of getting the money moved to the 701 account. Um, that is the account that doesn't have a whole lot of, it's not very robust in terms of showing us exactly what happened with the money. It looks like on 700 account, it's 
money in, money out. And that's about all you get. And so I was thinking that, you know, while we're tracking the money in our 701, where it's very secure, you know, and, and covered by MMRMA and risk stuff, we could also be tracking that money in QuickBooks where reports more reports that are readily available um, and easier to understand could be created. So I think for a small investment of $60 and a little bit of you know my time when I'm getting these um, emails from um, the PayPal, I can pop those in. And then it's a, also a second way to compare the amounts that we have in the city accounts to what is showing in QuickBooks. So are, are there any other software needs that we can anticipate that need to integrate to QuickBooks? Um, will we at, at some point need a, a CRM, a customer relationship management software piece where we're able to track donors? Uh, does QuickBooks have that function in terms of uh, being able to link individual um, donations to, uh, to address information? I think it does. Um, I haven't uh, had to do that specifically with my uh, current experience in QuickBooks, but I can check into it. Yeah, I think that's probably our only upcoming need. It's the ability to, to organize, organize any donors beyond recognition um, that we would do of them as well. So okay. um, at some point we would need to have some word processing software uh, to be able to send thank you letters, things like that. Okay. and. Um, do you have ideas about which CRM software uh, some you all would be interested in? Because it, it may be a question of, you know, is the CRM software compatible with QuickBooks? Right. Right. So the specific CRM software rather than QuickBooks, because I, I think QuickBooks is for other, you know, it can integrate in other softwares, but. Uh, maybe we do a quick, uh, Google search of, actually, let me do it while we're all here to see if um, CRM integration with QuickBooks. I'm way ahead of you. All right, did you beat me? Yeah. Julie, what are you um, thinking you, you want to use QuickBooks for? Uh, more robust reporting. So the, the financials for monthly reporting and then probably year end and the 990 work. So Shar, did you find the same thing that I found that there are um, at least eight that integrate with it? Nutshell, Method, Insightly, Zoho, Salesforce, Copper, Fresh Sales, and Green Rope? Yeah, no, no shortage of options. Looks like it. And the one I'm familiar with in that group is Salesforce. Um, yeah. I've heard about that one also. How about Alex? Did any of those others ring a bell for you? Yeah, we've used a couple of them. Um, we're at my organization. We use we have a big partnership with Salesforce. So um, as long as th it looks like there's a lot of options that range the gamut of price and functionality. I've used I've used Zoho, which if you have a, like a small number of um, clients and uses is free. Um, it was a little clunky, although it's probably gotten better since I last used it. Um, so, you know, that's a, a, might be a reasonable startup option. Then the question would be, can you export the data into a more vigorous application as we grow? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and Pete, did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. Um, I think in the back of my mind, I'm not... I'm not overly concerned with this. I, I think in the back of my mind, you've heard me say this before, it seems like, um, and it's just probably based on my prior experience, that the city should, the, the few checks that we're gonna cut um, and the, the little bit of activity, at least for a while, it seems like the city's system should be fine. And there's not going to be a lot of activity where it wouldn't be very easy to have them print off a general ledger and plop the, uh, whether we do it or we hire somebody to plop the, the amounts from the different general ledger account numbers, because there's only going to be a few of them into the, the 990. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't have strong feelings about it, but it just, um, 
it feel it feels like you might it's not even the cost as much as just a lot of effort on your part to try to set up a separate at least a, a separate general ledger system now to hire to have a you know a crm or something that keeps track of you know like salesforce or something that keeps track of donations and it has a database of people that that's completely different i i do think you need that but you know quickbooks or you know an accounting system i'm, I'm just not sure you need to worry about that right now it seems like it's something the city should take care of but yeah i um if we go back to the conversation we had about the mou um you know from what i remember if we were going to stay in the 295 then the reports would be more robust just because that's how bsna is set up um, but in either case um the collection of the numbers for the um, 990 you know the annual submission and then the every two or three years where we have to provide information to keep our charitable license um, the 501c3 i mean as a charitable um, uh, organization uh, the finance department doesn't have the bandwidth to make those reports for us so that's kind of what i remember in the mou you know either way we went those two things were not covered so i've always been kind of thinking about okay so what could i do on the front end to not you know be crammed at the end of the year trying to collect you know the information and get what we need to submit submitted so that's it's another thought process that's been going on in my head Char? Julie, have you used QuickBooks before? I have. That's what we use for the um, high school PTAs and what we used in um, the U.S. Green Building Council Detroit chapter. So I've, I've had, I don't know, maybe six or seven years worth of experience using it. It's relatively easy. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, I use, we use Quicken, which is their sort of low end uh, household version. Um, yep. And even I find that a, a clunky for the purposes that Tom has mentioned in terms of customer management, customer communication, that sort of thing. So, but if you're familiar with it, then that's a, a but I am inclined to agree with Pete that, you know, maybe just a, a, a few spreadsheets will hold us for the next year. And if we do decide to move to QuickBooks, it's certainly easy to import that stuff into, into QuickBooks. But, um, you know, I've, I'm inclined to defer to the executive director here because that's really kind of an ad admin staffing decision. I, I want, let me just, <clears throat> I want whatever's easiest for you, Julie. And I, I just think I go back to that conversation we had, which was if we were one of the 200 accounts, we would be part of the city, quote unquote. And so they would have to provide that information. But if we're a 700 account because we're not, part of the city they don't have to provide that information i just go back to well how about we're a 700 account and you just pretend <laughs> that we're part of the city and provide that information i mean it, it's just but that uh, whatever is easier for you I, yeah yeah and and i appreciate that one of the things that you know i i recognize is um there is a bandwidth issue um already um and i think there aren't any other organizations or even departments that would require, you know, a 990 information report at the end of the year. So we would be coming in and asking for an additional additional item. And and I, I get it. And, you know, in some ways, me doing it um, would be easier, you know, because I can do it on my own time. If you, here's the thing, if, if, we, if we hire somebody to do the 990, and I think we talked about doing that, you know, we mm -hmm. hire, a firm or somebody do the 990 the city could print the general ledger that you use for your monthly report and give that to them and they could do the 990 it's not it's what are your sales you know how much cash do you have in the bank it's really straightforward you don't need a custom report for a 990 you could just give them what the city is already printing for you so i, I yeah, so so I've seen the the accounts that are 701s, the way that those reports come up, it's not the same as the financial document that I give you all right now. So on the 701 reports, it's just like a line item. 
And so the whole year sometimes fits on one page. And if you tell them, can you just give it to me in the same format? They can't do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. So I certainly, I could check into it. I would be shocked if, generally with, the, with those accounting reports, there's a format, right? There's a, there's a format. And yeah. then you select what fund or funds you want to print. So it's this format. Do you want it in your, for your general fund? It would print the general fund in that format. If you want it in a 701 fund, it would print the 701 in that format. It's not, they should not. I mean, I, and I can't say for sure, but I would be shocked if they have to reformat anything. Okay. So these reports I am doing right now. I got some basic understanding of BSNA um, to run reports for my grants administrative part of this job and so I transferred it over um, so that said I'm not exactly sure how BSA and BSNA works for all of the reports but when I asked um, a year ago I was given a report for the 701 it was very simple so yeah I can I can look into that if that's how you want to go I want whatever is easiest for you, right? So the other thing is, is that, you know, just to throw this out there. Um, so BSNA has a, like a help desk. Um, and because we were a city of Roseville, we had BSNA like early on. It was, it was very easy to use, they're very helpful. Could you, as a city employee, call BSNA and yeah. talk to the person and say, hey, I'm looking, because they're accountants there. I, here are the reports that I'm trying to use. Is there something, you know, within BSNA that, you know, can you show me how to do this? They would show you how to do it. That's what they're there for. Okay. So instead of the finance director, for example, calling and asking the same question, in my mind, you could, but you probably have to get permission from the city to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, and I, I say these things only because I get, it just shouldn't be that hard for you, but um, I don't want to cause more, more trouble for you, you know, make it more difficult. Julie, are there other projects that you um, need different software applications, uh, including that Quick, uh, QuickBooks would uh, would be helpful to? Just kind of anticipating what our needs are and what your um, your needs are in the next year. Um, <clears throat> other than just you know being able to keep track of everything myself and run reports when we need to, understanding how QuickBooks work, QuickBooks work and what kind of reports are available. And then, you know, when it's time for the 990, just being able to pull those things. I don't, I can't think of anything else that we would need because it, it would really be just a shell QuickBooks, right? It's just for making reports because the money and check writing and all of those kinds of activities stay with the city and, and would be done by the city. Um, so at this point, I can't say that, that I do in the next year foresee any reason that we would use it in a more robust fashion rather than just you know having access to more robust reports is the city going to print checks for you or yes would you have to do that okay i i think that's the we still need to get that mou in place and i think it you know we held off until the new city manager was in place so we could talk about you know does this all jive with what he's thinking and um uh i think the the idea was to have him present it to the the city commission if i remember correctly um and and that was one of the things they would uh write the checks and um you know with with permission through minutes i think from you all um giving authorization for those expenses to be paid and they'll make, make deposits sense. and make deposits also it might make sense to to meet with you said uh, him do we did you select somebody i think i do remember reading something about that um yes um mr break paul break okay when does he start uh may 21st so he's been in for about one oh, month okay and he may you were not here at the beginning but he may um pop in uh, to say hello to you all because he's interested in making the connection. Okay, great. It might make sense to have that meeting with him about the MOU and that kind of thing. And maybe from there, we can determine what software you need to make sure that you're successful in what you're doing. You know, okay. maybe we start with that conversation first. Okay. All right. That sounds fine. And um, 
that gives me a little bit of time to uh, do some more poking around in, um, in BSNA to find out if indeed I can make um, a financial report for a 701 account that looks like the 295 that I present to you all right now. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else on this topic at all? It sounds like the homework on that is just a bit more checking and then uh, uh, do you, would you like for us to make a decision at our next meeting? Sure, depending on how it turns out. If, if it is uh, available to me to adjust reports in 701 with help of the SNA's help desk, then there may not be any reason for it. Because again, it would just be a shell so that I could make reports right. um, that were easy easy to, to, to do when I have time to do them and then easy for people to understand. Sure. Do we want to then, to keep this moving, um, because it's an operational function, do we want to um, give you the uh, kind of the go ahead to um, do the research, make the choice and let us know? Does that sound good to the rest of the group? Or do you think we need, because there's a financial investment, we need to have, have a vote on it? I move that we authorize the executive director to spend up to $60 on financial management software if she chooses. Second. Okay. All right. Uh, any discussion? All right, we'll close discussion. And uh, those in favor say aye. We'll go through roll call vote. Hi, Pete. Welcome to the meeting, by the way. I didn't get to Hello. see <laughs> Pete, you get to vote first. Aye. <laughs> Char. Aye. And Alex. Aye. And I say aye as well. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you indicated Mark had a, um, a situation he's not able to join us, so we'll just move past that topic unless he provided something for you to, um, to report on his behalf? He did not. Okay, great. So next we'll move into unfinished business, discuss kickoff event and Robertson Brothers donation. So, um, let's see, I think. Where'd I go? It's a nice picture of you. Where'd I go? You're there, right? We oh, saw yeah. a picture of you. Welcome back. Um, so for, for this, you had sent a Royal Oak kickoff plan version one <laughs> PDF. We'll use that as the document to guide us through this conversation, correct? Right. I so right. does everybody have a, I'm sorry, Tom, does everybody have a copy of that? Because I could try to share screen if um, need be. I've got it. Does it, everyone else, would you prefer we share it so we can all see it together? I got, this is the ROCF kickoff plan, right? Yep. 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 One. I got it. Okay, I got it. Is that? Okay. So our, at this event and for our kickoff plan, we would make sure that we are first promoting our foundation's mission, um, which we'll discuss, I think, as another agenda item today. Uh, announce the foundation's ability to accept donations and methods to give, checked online donations. Introduce the logo, its creator, and thank OCC. That's a must. Announce the first major donation. Recognize legacy groups and confirm that the funds are protected. That I think will be very important. Introduce the staff and board of trustees. Notify prospective trustees of the opportunity to be part of this group. And raise 75,000 for three local charities addressing COVID-19 needs. That's 7,500. Oh, I'm sorry, I added an extra zero on there, sorry. So the idea is that this would be a virtual event, uh, expect, or do we assume that it's virtual or do we assume that it's uh, just covered on CMTV or do we want to ask for a socially distant um, uh, announcement? I'm assuming that the, the participants will be there in person, okay. um, appropriately distanced. Um, and uh, I spoke with um, uh, Richard Wilson, our, our TV director, um, and he said that is like super doable. Um, he, re he was the one who recommended we do it outside, easier social distancing, better lighting. Um, so I, and, and the idea would be, I, I, I don't know if we're gonna broadcast it live to be TBD, but certainly film it for you know, a subsequent broadcast. 
Nice. This is, I think this is a very nice plant. What, what is CMTV? Is that, Community, um, community some meat. Um, so, uh, we have two methods of transmitting information. We have a, ch we have the channel, the public access channel that the, the cable companies give us. Um, and so that's our CMTV uh, channel. Um, but then, of course, our staff also records meetings and other activities to share on YouTube and through social media. Okay. All right. And then you want to go through the elements, too, of what... Um... Right. So, so the idea would be, you know, kind of a traditional, you know, press conference. Um, I who does these tasks remains open for discussion. I would see the board chair doing opening remarks, um, um, introducing the graphic designer, you know, uh, easel with the logo on it, pull the sheet off to reveal the logo. Um, the Robertson brothers with a great big check, which they ceremonially present, you know, the Robertson people get a chance to make a speech about, you know, how wonderful Royal Oak is. Um, announcing the uh, GoFundMe campaign that will take 7,500 of the Robertson gift um, as a match against an additional $7,500. Um, uh, Julie and I met with um, Judy Davids and Carol Schwanger, who are, uh, you know, are, are actually running the city, truth be told. Um, and they suggested that Blessings in a Backpack, the Salvation Army, and the Open Hands Food Pantry were three really boots on the ground, direct service to people in need organizations. And so those that would be what we recommend. Um, uh, uh, I know Blessings in a Backpack and Open Hands. Carol knows the people at Salvation Army. Um, and uh, we could have them present, but I would also, if, we, if we're doing this as a videotaped production, then if they supply us with some photos, Richard can integrate photos of their work of them, you know, serving people into the presentation. Um, and then we'll have to set up a GoFundMe page, but the city's already done that when it raised funds for uh, Eagle Plaza, the downtown park here a few years ago. So we've already got a track record and tools to use GoFundMe. Um, and then we'd also ask Robertson Brothers to go to their vendors and their peers to contribute to, contribute to the GoFundMe campaign. So, so that's kind of the big picture. Gotcha. In conversations with folks who had recommended um, the, these three nonprofits, uh, is there something they're specifically doing that's related to COVID-19 that would be worth promoting as well? Well, it's, um, it's food relief. It's, yeah. you know, uh, pure and simple. I mean, there are many things that people these days need um, that are sort of more sophisticated needs, if they need rent relief, if they need, you know, those sorts of things. But, you know, f hunger is a, is a common thing, especially for kids. Um, Blessings in a Backpack is working, usually they work during the school year, but they're working now throughout the summer to make sure that Royal Oak school children um, get fed. Um, Open Hands Pantry is more, is for the, the general public. They're affiliated with St. John's Church at 11 Mile and Woodward. Um, and they have a very active program. Marie Donegan, former city commissioner, former state rep, is uh, very active in that church. So, I mean, again, they're very boots on the ground, very um, hand, like hands on, making sure uh, food gets into people's refrigerators and pantries. And so, um, as a, a related item to that, then our mission will expand to not only serve Royal Oak based civic organizations that are connected to the city, but we will also then activate citywide campaigns that engage and, and support Royal Oak based nonprofit organizations. Right. I mean, we have certainly and nothing that we've said or done to this date rules out the possibility that we can give to organizations not affiliated with the city, even if over the long run, or, or, or maybe just even in the short term, if city uh, um, uh, legacy organizations are our main priority, but not our only priority. 
Got any discussion on that or thoughts on that from the group? When, when do you think we would do this as far as a timeline? I don't know, in the next three to four weeks. I mean, as I said to Julie, this is my wheel. I'll, I mean, I'll honcho this. This is my wheelhouse. Um, so, you know, I, I've got all of the tools to put this together to make it happen. I, I think it's a great approach. I'm, I'm just thinking about ways, I don't know, if we could get the media there, somehow get some, you know, get a television station there or somebody to cover it. Um, if we could, you know, if there's enough of a hook there. I think relating to COVID and, and, and food insecurity during this crisis makes a lot of sense. Um, I appreciate the shout out to OCC, obviously. I think that adds also kind of an interesting news angle to it. You know, the student, uh, you, know, does, you know, it's kind of that sense of community having students from the community designing, you know, the logo. Um, that is a real nice story to it as well. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking out loud here as far as location, if you wanted to have it outside our campus, that could make some sense. Um, if, I mean, we're closed, but you know, in case of rain, we could always go in and use the, the theater. Um, um, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. I, I think I, I like it. Well, would we want to use the theater anyway? Right. I was going to say, what about the farmer's market, since they're a legacy organization for Roots? But just, uh, I'm thinking out loud. Theater would be obviously, uh, obviously has theatrical benefit as far as acoustics, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. Probably all the intact AV we, we would need as well, too. If we can ask for your group's assistance for that, or if you would need to, if there would be a charge for that, I wonder. See, what I'm liking about this is, and I'm just thinking here, um, if we could also take a little bit of that student angle, OCC, right? So we can promote it from our students' perspective that we had one of our students, our students um, all worked on the logo and we could promote the kind of the winning student and it creates some publicity through our, our channels, our social media channels. And it's like anything, you know, how do you, it depends on the news day, right? If we can... <laughs> If the city and, um, and the college work together, can we, I'm just thinking, is there, can we get the, can we get Fox 2 News here, you know, at, at the college to cover it? Um, um, what does it say? Never screw up on a news, that's long news day, exactly right. <laughs> the opposite, the opposite. So the opposite is true, you know, if you've got a soft event on a slow news day. No problem. <laughs> we just got to hope Trump is tweeting something uh, uh, really outrageous that day, then, uh, you know, or doesn't in our case, right? Um, so anyway, I, I would be open and I could talk to my team, um, but I, I, I'd be interested in some kind of a joint event, being that it was one of our students and if that, especially if that helps create more buzz or more draw, especially as it relates to the news media. No guarantees, but. Um. So I like the idea, um, but right. does, does the farmer's market make it easier for us to sequester people, you know, social distance wise? I mean, I kind of like that, uh, the farmer's market. Right because you could like tape off spaces, you know, Robertson here, students here, and really, you know, show that you're being careful. It does make sense. And I wanna make sure that it's about the city of Royal Oak and not OCC too. That, that's the one thing that I'm, I'm struggling with a little bit, but I, I guess my point is any way that we can help, I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded um, if we can make it better somehow, if we can add some value somehow. Um, Is there anything going on with like Arts, Beats, and Eats? Um, I, I honestly I haven't heard anything. Are, are they still having that? Um, I'm wondering, is there a way to tag on to that? Because that gets a lot of publicity. I don't know whether we can or not, whether John Witzel let us, but um, I, I don't want to be overshadowed, but I want to make sure that we get a lot of attention. 
Yeah, he's waiting for, you know, the state to decide what they want to do. But, you know, right now we're limited to what, 50 people? I just don't see it getting to, you know, 200,000 by the time Labor Day rolls around. If anything, we might be going backwards. Yeah. So, um, preferred venue, what, let's, let me be, let's settle on that. The, the time frame you want to do in the next month. Yep. Um, the, that's the when, um, the where, um, do we, we have two options right now, OCC or, um, the farmer's market, kind of a straw poll on, on, on preferences. I, and I'm fine with either. So I, I could go either way. We could ask Richard Wilson, which he prefers. Is Richard in charge of the farmer's market or? No, he's the. He's the uh, CMTV. He's our TV director. Oh, okay. So, so I, I don't know if he's probably familiar with your setup there, Pete, because we've done you know city events there. Yeah, that's true. The state of the the mayor had a state of the city there one time. Right. So mm -hmm. let's ask Richard which he okay. prefers, mm -hmm. and and you know make it a technical decision. The farmers market has a, makes a lot of sense though too. I, I I'd go either way on this one. Um, okay, we can reach out to him. Okay. Yep, both have value. Um, anything? Let's see. So we'll be dedicating uh, seventy-five hundred of the sixteen thousand dollar grant as match dollars. Um, we'll set up the GoFundMe elements as well. Um, is there anything else that we need to to um, add to this message that? talks about future plans to give a taste of where we're going. Um, you know, that we are raising funds at this point for three organizations. Each of them have a location in Royal Oak, correct? In Salvation Army, their, their location is both retail and they have a church. Um, Blessing in a backpack, where are they located? Uh, they, they work out, they have worked out of the school I'm not sure. I, I don't know where physically they operate. You know, it just occurred to me. I think Richard Wilson is recording this meeting right now. Hey, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> He's on mute. So it might not be him. It might be one of his staff. So that's a possibility. But he could weigh in here at any at any moment. Feel free if you're out there. <laughs> All right, and the third, the third group. What? Um, how? How are they connected to Royal Oak if it's not by geography? Which? Um, open Hands. Oh, the, the, that's the group. That's the the, the food pantry. Yeah, Open Hands is at St. John's. Oh, Salvation yeah. Army is the church up on. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Crooks. And then Blessings in a Backpack. They operate out of a warehouse here in Royal Oak. Yeah, but they're um they're an inter they're a national organization, but yeah, to your point, Shar, they operate, and then also um. I think, oh, sorry, we have a message from Richard. I have no mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I was going to say, but I don't they partner with the Royal Oak Youth Association? Or am I drawing, or am I making connections that don't exist? Um, Roya has been funnel, has been giving them money. Royal Oak collects money, blessings in a backpack, spends it on food, packages the food, and distributes it. Um, so even if they're, I mean, even if they're working in a Troy warehouse, their, um, their audience is students in Royal Oak Public Schools. It might be too late, but anything going on, or have you heard anything regarding the Woodward Dream Cruise? The, um, all of the cities along Woodward, uh, none of the cities along Woodward are authorizing any events uh, any show of event. events that the cities have to give permits for. Okay. Um, the, Woodward Avenue is a public road. Anybody can drive on it anytime they want. So. Okay. okay. I got you. So beyond um, recognizing the legacy organizations from Roots, do we need to have some sort of messaging that talks about what our plans are for civic organizations inside of Royal Oak then too, just so that we're we're delineating, we're helping uh, local nonprofit organizations are part of our, our, um, our efforts and for the civic organizations and that we could, we could list them, you know, the animal shelter, anything that helps provide, provide um, clarity of the message of, of what, what exists in Royal Oak and what we'll be helping with. 
Well, and I will say that my, if I have any hesitancy about moving forward with this event, it's that we haven't had that mission statement, you know, strategic direction discussion to really be able to say in a, in a, you know, um, in unison, what our purpose is and how we divide our attention. So if there's anything that's going to hold this announcement up, that would be it. Okay. When we have that as part of our agenda, though, too, to discuss, don't, yeah, the mission and vision statement is, um, it's next. So um, if we're able to come to resolution on that in today's meeting, then the plan to have this in the next month would, would still be on track, do you, you think? I think so. Others? Okay. I think so. And um, Tom, number five under objectives, that's a place where it says recognize the legacy groups. So maybe that can be fleshed out a bit to, you know, add a little bit more narrative to the groups that we intend on, on supporting within the, you know, the city's operations. Sure. And just for a, not really a bit of brainstorming, but I did have an idea that's not an original idea at all. But um, if we would consider a, a very low key uh, fundraiser um, for some of those organizations going forward, if you remember a few years back, there were t shirts that indicated the zip codes of a Royal Oak. And you could buy whether you were a 67 or a 73. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember I bought them. I thought they were awesome. And I don't know if I'm unique in that, though. So that's why I would love your opinion. Do we consider um, uh, remounting something like that as one of our first next steps for a fundraising uh, campaign where we're selling them online um, with a print to produce so we don't have to over order an inventory and it's all fulfilled online as a, a general fundraiser for all of the, the civic organizations that are within the city of Royal Oak? So uh, several, uh, I almost wore that t-shirt today, several of the city's entities have done fundraisers like that. There's the, the Veterans Events Committee, which did Oak Stand Strong, the library did, RO Proud. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a, already an established um, uh, uh, activity within the city. Um, so I, I would say the tools are pretty accessible. Okay. I don't know that I would make it part of this announcement because it adds another message that is likely, it's something that could get confused. But if we if we use it as a talking point that you will see a number of community-wide fundraisers coming forward that you'll recognize as part of our, our efforts and our brand that help to support these organizations and we would use that as part of bullet point five, so. Well, I think, you know, our, I mean, once we develop a mission statement and, and strategies, then, I mean, a, an action plan for the year, I mean, is it, is it better to sell t-shirts or is it better to start building a, a, a CRM, a database and working on direct mail solicitation? I mean, what our tactics are, are a whole nother discussion. It is, you're right. So, but we could, that'd be a nice announcement to add. There's, you can look for direct mail, a direct mail campaign, Look for this logo. You'll know it's 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 money that all it will be raised locally will stay locally. Those types of positioning messages that will help and help reinforce our credibility. Yeah. So I think we need a formal motion to adopt this as our plan, um, and then we can flesh out in that discussion any details uh, from the plan that Sharp presented, which I I hope I already endorsed. So let's I, I don't want to add that that to it, but is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a, a second? second? All right. Discussion on this? Any any unintended consequences of us moving at this pace is my only question. Shar, you raised one that will we have flushed out our mission statement to be clear. Anything else that we might not anticipate based on doing it in a month? I'd say the only other piece is some of the um, policy items that I think we should, that we'll, we'll talk about today. Um, so we'll just want those finalized. Um, and we have uh, some pieces to talk about today that will help us finalize them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is yeah, there a better time to make this announcement in terms of things happening in Royal Oak or things that might not be happening? Like you'd mentioned the Woodward Dream Cruise. Um, there'll be obviously a, a missed opportunity, um, but will people be out just driving? Who knows? 
Um, but is there, a, is there a time that people look for things in Royal Oak that this might be an appropriate time frame to align with instead of four weeks from now? I think that's a, a good question. City yes, Hall, sir. City Hall is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, scheduled to open mid-August. There's that. <coughs> it looks like Normandy Oaks isn't going to be done until the end of the year, although there's a lot of uh, forward progress there now. Um, yeah, I was thinking of Normandy Oaks because the pavilion is ba is in place and you know, will be operational. So that's like a backdrop. Um, you know, it's, it's meant to be a community, all ages, all abilities, diverse place. Um, you know, I, so that might be a, the grand opening of Norma the Oaks could be a good one, except it's unclear when that date is at this point. Yeah. Although, like that that might be an alternate alternate um, venue for our announcement. Which announcement? For for our uh, for our event. For the kickoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what date? Can you sorry? Can we restate the date that we're looking at then? Four weeks from now. Well, let's let's approve the action plan without picking a date. Okay. Because I was going to say, it, um, we may need a meeting, make sure that we have a meeting before the event. So that, that's where I was going with that slash. Then we also might know some of those, those other dates that I were talking about. I think once we have a, I mean, my general MO is, you know, once we've got a, you know. Framework. Right. I put together a, a spreadsheet with, you know, assignments and tasks and due dates and so forth. Cool. All right, so if there's no other discussion on this, um, I think we have a motion to approve this. Clarification from our recent discussion that we'll approve the plan, but the date will be pending. Um, uh, do we need to amend the motion, that, or, or is everyone clear that that's what we are, we are voting on? I don't think there's any date in the plan. No. No. Okay. All right, then let's uh, close discussion and uh, we'll call the question. Uh, those in favor of this uh, motion, we'll do a roll call by aye. I'll start with you, Alex. Aye. Char? Aye. He? Aye. And I'm at aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> <laughs> That's very nice, Alex. Thank you for the little, uh, for applauding. Learn how, learn how to use those. All right, let's move next into, um, on our agenda, to, let's close my agenda. Our mission statement. And there's a, a document that we started at our last meeting that Julie sent out. So if you'll open up the thought starters for mission statements. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I have that pulled up and then I also dropped um, Tom the option that you sent over this afternoon mm -hmm. into a document with Shars. So we have a document with a couple suggested here and I can pull that up if it would be helpful. Sure. Yeah, if you could. Right, did you send something today, Julie? Didn't see that. No, I, I just I just did this right before the meeting. Yeah, if you'd share it on the screen and we can read through the um through the, the most recent document, that'd be great. Yeah, so um I don't have share screen. Oh wait, there it is. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> can you make it bigger, Julie? Uh, yeah. How's that? Yep, nice.
So what would make sense as far as uh, digging into this? Calling out things that we like, make it like a heat map by calling out components that we particularly like, and then Julie, you could like highlight them, um, or we could go through one by one, um, or have Shar, uh, Tom, and Ju you, Julie, kind of like go through the the context for what you put together. Sorry, those are three things that came to mind for me as far. <laughs> I'll ask the question and then stack the question. Um, but what did you have in mind? I like well, your let me ask. Um, sorry, Tom. Alex, do you do you have something you want to have put up here? And Pete, I have the same question for you. Or should we just work from these right now? I I I'm okay with working from these because um, I keep going back to that original that, that I guess is the Julie your proposed mission statement. I I still like that, um, but I, okay. I really didn't have any other suggestions. So um, let's see, Alex, I kind of like the idea of um, maybe going through each one individually. And while we do that, highlight uh, which pieces are, you know, compelling. Yeah, I was going to say if we have an annotation capability, which I don't think we do um, in this version of Zoom, which is fine. So if you feel comfortable um, doing that, we could do like a round robin on that or something. Can you use the highlight function in Word to just highlight the words that pop out to Alex's point about heat mapping? Yeah, that would be easy. I also have the review tab. Let's see what, oh. what I've got here. So yeah, Shark, I, don't you see, I don't see annotate, um, but I do have track changes. New, how about new comments or highlighting? Highlighting is easy. Yeah, let's see the highlighting function so that you can pull out words that that, uh, that grab folks' attention. Shark, okay. do you want to start with yours and, and the thought behind um, your your proposed mission statement? Well, I think there's a sure. Um, so there's there's the question of what, and there's the question of how. Um, and I think I wrote what I wrote because I want to tell people what we do. That is, there, there is an end in mind, and that is health, safety, knowledge, and culture. And I would say those words are, I mean, I are open for discussion, but I want to say what our outcomes are, and then how we do it is through leveraging donations and enabling local philanthropy. The, the, so those latter thoughts are captured in the other two um, in perhaps more articulate ways than mine, but I mean, I want to tell people what we're trying to get done. Good. And that's very clear from this. And in terms of heat mapping this, that you pulled out health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities. I would highlight those because I think it provides clarity of, um, of mission. Any other words that resonate with anyone else reviewing this? Um, I like the enabling. The, the, la the third to last word. Um, I really like the enabling local philanthropy phrase, but particularly the word enabling. And leveraging uh, donations tied to that also um, ties in nicely with our first press event too. Want me to highlight those? I would, yes. So leveraging donations and enabling. Well constructed, Shar. Thank you. All right, any other comments on this at all? Or ideas or thoughts? All right, um, I'll go next. Um, this is one I spent some time looking at uh, Civic Foundation websites and their missions to see what type of wording they used. And what I, um, what I liked about and, and what, what um, helped me pull this one together was um, it focuses on on the reader as the activator. So um, the mission of the Royal Oak Civic Foundation is to inspire residents and business leaders, that's the folks that we want to connect with, in our city, keeps it local, who want to make a difference in the community. It's, it's little generals, and I do like Charge better in that one. 
and then um, specifically partnerships with residents, businesses, schools, and not-for-profit organizations ensure that civic programs and services work together to achieve lasting positive change. Um, focused on that so that um, the who was, was um, broadened to business categories and then um, uh, positive change being the final words as the, the piece that you'll hopefully remember the most. I can chime in too for, for the heat map purposes. Um, I like the inspire, um, so just the word inspire. And then um, the uh, lasting positive change, the last three words for me um, really are the ones that are motivating when I read yours, Tom. Also, well-constructed. Sorry, I don't want to shortchange you on praise as well. <laughs> Thank you, because I was going to add. <laughs> so needy, so needy. <laughs> All right, and Julie, do you want to go through yours? Unless, unless there's any other comments on this one. All right, let's move forward to, uh, to Julie. Okay, so, so mine basically is what was on the old sheet, except I adjusted it and added individual and company donors so that we could um, you know, go toward a comment that Tom made last month relative to you know, making sure that everybody knows they're invited to participate in this. It's not just um, residents, but, but um, businesses, Etc. And then I like I like the last three, the greater common good. And I think it's inspiring. And um, honestly, I don't remember when when I crafted this in the first place. It was months and months and months ago. So it probably was, you know, an amalgamation of other mission statements that I had pulled from different places. Um, so that's that. Great. All right, words that resonate with this group? So the, the elements that I like in both Tom's and Julie's are calling out residents and business leaders. Um, I, I guess I like business leaders better than companies just because it's talking, you're talking to a person, not to a thing. But both of those, in, you know, incorporate that, those two ideas, residents and, you know, businesses. Yeah, I, another thing I guess I like about this is um, that we're saying we're providing rewarding ways, you know, for people to become involved. So it makes it much uh, a much more positive way of, of soliciting support. So if you want to highlight rewarding ways. How about provides rewarding? Provides. Yeah, because we're, we're providing that. And I would agree with you about um, greater common good or greater good are the, the words that um, <clears throat> stick with me. So, but is, I mean, the, so fundamental, because, uh, you know, community foundations jobs are to promote philanthropy, to build a, an endowment, basically, in their community. Is that our purpose here, is to get more people involved? Or, to my point, is our purpose to actually fix things? Good question. We're inspiring philanthropy to fix things. So they're connected, but it's, it's, the, uh, it's the tail end of that. I was gonna say our, our purpose is the thriving, resilient community. That's the, the words I like. Um, Julie, also well-crafted. Um, but the, the thriving, resilient community is the part for me. I feel like with all the green pieces that we have, we can construct one that <laughs> actually falls together. Um, uh, the only thing I'll challenge on is the greater good component um, because the Salvation Army is just doing the most good. Um, so I, I, when working with other nonprofits, we tend to stay away from language that is similar to that, but not to, not to say that it's not good language. Sorry. So that's a Salvation Army thing? Doing the most good, yeah. Oh, right. Doing the most, yeah, right. But I like 
both greater, common, and good. So, <laughs> but I just want to call attention to the fact that. Um, I'm sorry, what is Salvation yeah. Army? So I'm just going to jot this down. Doing the most good. So can we agree that um, we could probably take the first few words of Shars? We don't have to say what our mission is, but we can just say what we do. So the first words would be the Royal Oak Civic Foundation, and then we start with a verb. Because it's both Julie and Char have that same starting. You don't need the mission that's uh, that's included in mine. <clears throat> So I just, so I really like, I mean, I'm struggling here because I, I like elements of all three. Um, I, I think in my mind, and I, I guess we'd have to write this out, but I'm, I'm thinking if you took Julie's as a base, for example, um, but it, so on Julie's, you know, the Royal Oaks of a Foundation provides rewarding ways. I, I kind of like the word inspire. Um, it's a little cleaner, a little tighter because it, otherwise it's going to get kind of long. Um, I like, you know, the inspiration um, of Tom's. And I wonder if you could kind of like substitute that with, you know, the providing rewarding ways. But I do think we have to add to Julie's. I like what Char did with sort of narrowing it down a little bit by saying it's health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities. I, I wonder if we could take Julie's as a base and sort of take the inspiration of Tom's and then the the clarity of health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities of Shars and add that in. I mean, what, what, what would that look like? Would that hit all the right notes? Royal Oak Civic Foundation inspires... Donors, maybe, just say donors. Or provides inspiration to support a thriving, resilient community where needs are addressed and resources are distributed for the common good. And then I was thinking about, I like this part, partnerships with residents, businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations ensure that civic programs and services work together to achieve lasting positive change. And that improve the health, safety, and knowledge and culture opportunities of Royal Oak residents. I don't know if that's too long, but. I, li I like it, I like where it's going. <clears throat> okay. So, so do you want Cut and paste. Um, let's see. So, are we still at uh, the Royal Oak Civic Foundation provides inspiration? Provides inspiration. You said to donors. Provides inspiration. Why don't you say inspires? Inspires. From instead of provides inspiration, just to inspires. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Provides inspiration, inspires, inspires, period. Inspires. Hey, short and sweet. In fact, that could, that could be our uh, tagline. So it's ROCF inspire. Inspires donors mm -hmm. to support. A thriving. Did I just cut and paste? Are you going to do? That's fine. Yep. Resilient? Yep. Resilient community. Yep. That whole where needs are addressed and resources are distributed for the greater common good. I guess let's just put that in for right now, just to. Need your to, okay, common good, straight for the common good. And then what did I say? Uh, burr, 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 burr. I like that part, you know, period. And then cut and paste that partnerships with residents, the, the rest of that whole thing of times. This might get a little long, but we'll look at it here. Okay, Let, together to achieve lasting positive change. And then we got to work in Shars clarity which is together to achieve um to achieve whatever that is and i think you say that improves the 
health, safety, knowledge, and culture opportunities of Royal Oak residents. So what does that look like? Really long. Well, and, and I'm going to suggest one thing that we do that Shar did with hers, and that's to put the the what we're doing before the how. Yes. Um, so it's the first thing that, that we read. And then also I need to uh, admit something as well. I'm over here saying, you know, greater common good. And fun fact, the organization I work for is last statement is their part of mission is advance the common good. So uh, <laughs> perhaps that's why I was trying to avoid it. <laughs> Less so. With the uh -huh. But yeah, so but to that point, I would pull the improves the health, the, that last part that we just put from Shars, put it after the word foundation, and then add the word by, um, and then it would be inspiring donors too. Does that make sense what I'm saying? This is so. literally <laughs> writing by committee. <laughs> For all those at home. Yep. We're combining structure, clarity, and inspiration. There you go. So in that sentence, that first sentence, we have Royal Oak twice. Yeah, I'll delete the, the, res, the Royal Oak before residence. Would we say residents of our city? Does that, do we need to have it be more clear or is it cleared by its, by its presentation? I think that's sufficient. Yeah. All right, now we need to start editing and getting, taking more, pulling words out. Um, so if you agree, let's put, should we pull out greater? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, common good? We want greater good? The greater good, if we're gonna keep that phrase can, in. Can you just get rid of, so what if you got rid of where needs are addressed and resources are distributed for the greater common good? What if you just said the Royal Oak Civic Foundation approves the health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities of residents by inspiring donors to support a thriving, resilient community, period. I'll buy it. Yeah. And then. Uh, that, wait, that didn't work. Hold on. That's okay. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, hang, put that back in for just one second. Hang on. I have an idea. I just want you to think about it. Undo, undo. Um, I love undo. Undo. So I was thinking. The Royal Oak Civic Foundation improves the health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities of residents, um, either period or by inspiring donors. I'm thinking, can we put partnerships with residents, businesses, schools, and not-for-profits in um, support a thriving, resilient community where needs are addressed? So we would take out the work together and achieve. I'm trying to get like rid of a whole line here, so I apologize for how choppy that sounds. So really, when you think about it, that last sentence there, partnerships with residents, businesses, schools, is that really part of the mission? It, it seems, it feels more like, it a, like a statement, like an opinion statement. Is that really our mission? That almost could be like one of our, I can't what you call it, like a strategy or like a, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm questioning whether that belongs in the mission, whether we need to have that. You know, could it just be knowledge of culture opportunities of residents by inspiring donors to support a thriving, resilient community, period. Maybe there's nothing after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a really good point because I could see that partnerships with residents, businesses, schools, you know, et cetera, um, to work together. I could see that as part of our vision. I mean, that, it's almost like a value. It's, it feels more like a value or something maybe. Or, or a vision, you know. where we want to be. We want to build these partnerships with the residents yeah. and businesses and schools. It's to important to us, but is it a mission? Yeah. 
Well, yeah, and in my original document, I also had strategies and values, and I had it really yeah. as a I like those. Yeah, and, I like those. Yeah, so I, I don't necessarily need that as part of the mission. Yeah, I, I think that's part of like your, your, like your value. Yeah, you have collaboration, yeah. Tom, are you okay if we hack that? Sure. My men emotionally went to any of it. I want to start to cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then. So then maybe we're, and we're even taking off my piece here, right? What do you think of that? I, I like short and sweet. I still like the idea of saying that our donors are people and businesses. What if they're foundations? Then they're still business, Company. aren't they? Yeah. It's still a business? Yeah, it's just a tax designation. Well, and when I think it was Tom who said, you know, residents and business leaders, because again, then you're talking to an individual, not a, a thing. I thought businesses are people, Char. <laughs> yeah, no. So the Royal Oak Civic Foundation improves the health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunity. Is it should be for residents? No, of. Well, okay. So, may okay, I see where you're going. Opportunities of, could you just say knowledge of cultural opportunities? Of residents by inspiring residents. Yeah, yeah. Again. Yeah, I was gonna say you could put business leaders first, um, or if you wanted to lead with something that wasn't business, or because obviously the residents uh, too close together, you could say organizations. Well, could we organizations. Say that, yeah. How about okay. cultural opportunities by inspiring residents? So just take out of residents. And cultural yeah. opportunities by by inspiring yeah. residents. And the only thing I would say is by doing that now, you, with that opportunities of residents, that clarifies that we're providing these opportunities really to the Royal Oak residents, not outside of your residents. What right? if we say, what if we say in the city? Health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities in, in Royal Oak. In the city of the city, culture opportunities. Yeah. Of the city, by in inspiring our, residents in the all right. In I our like that because what if we support the arts commission? I mean, there are people that will you know be calling Royal Oak home for a couple hours while they're on Main Street or something like that. Okay, of the city you know I mean? by inspiring residents, business lead and business leaders to, to support, support a thriving, resilient community. I like that. Uh-oh, I did something wrong here. It becomes opportunities in the city. In the city. In the city. Remove, okay. remove residents. And then by inspiring residents and business leaders, remove donors to support a thriving, resilient community. Do we need thriving and resilient? They're different words, different meanings. I personally like, I very much like both words, but if, if others, not to not to put a stake in the ground around them, <laughs> but I'm not sure what others think. I, okay, I, I would like go with both. I, I would think though, if you were gonna pick, I, I would say, I would drop resilient. I would say thriving community. Because if you're thriving, you're resilient, you're, you're everything. I mean, so if you wanted to tighten it up, I would, I would advocate, I would support getting rid of the word resilient, but I'm not married to that. I'll agree with you. I think thriving community is fine. It tightens I, it up. I like, I'm gonna, you know, and I'm like the tightest writer you'll ever meet, but I'm inclined to leave resilient in and for no other reason than I like the sound of it. I know, <laughs> it's kind of inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what we're here to do, we're to inspire residents and business leaders. Yeah. I, I, I'm partial to that word um, with my other hat on, the sustainability manager, right? 
because we like resilience in cities. Yeah, and I was All thinking, right. you know, the greatest need is some, right now we're working to support resilience um, through a pandemic. You know what I mean? Like, so that's part of, and obviously, and I agree, IP, like, if you're thriving, that means you've overcome the resilience. So it's almost like we've, you know, you know it's already kind of in there, but. You have to get rid of the word donors. <laughs> Yep, and the word the. Yep. Royal Oak Civic Foundation improves health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities in the okay. city. No, leave that the. This the? Yes, that the. <laughs> First the. All right. The the. Okay, so, so one thing that happens when I read this, when we remove the word donor, it says residents and business leaders supporting. What does that mean? They can support us by volunteering, but that's not what we're looking for. I think we need to make it clear, you know, that this is a fundraising organization. Then I go back to the word philanthropy. Okay. By inspiring philanthropy by... Philanthropy from? I was going to say, or local philanthropy of residents and business leaders. By inspiring a philanthropy from residents and business leaders? By. So by inspiring philanthropy by residents? Oh, shoot. Too, about, too many buys. A lot of buys there. Of. Yep. I like that, yeah. So, Roy Oak Civic Foundation improves health, safety, knowledge, and cultural opportunities in the city by inspiring philanthropy of residents and business leaders to support a thriving, resilient community. Do we need a thought instead of philanthropy? I'm sorry, what? A the instead of, in front of philanthropy, inspiring the philanthropy. Could be, my mind puts one there actually. Mine does too. <laughs> Except you know, right here we have a the like two words away we have a the. I'm inclined to say it's not necessary. Shar, you're the copy guru. What does your grammar say? Knowing that you and I disagree on the Oxford comma. <laughs> Wait, which one likes the Oxford comma? I do. <laughs> oh, you do. Your uh, your one didn't have it. That's why I thought you didn't. Oh. Oh. Well, but Shar, sorry, I have to put you on the spot. What do you think? Does the word the need to be there? Give me, okay, give me a second here. Health, safety, knowledge, and culture in the city by inspiring. I'm going to put the in there. But if we change that second, change the of to by, I wouldn't use the the. Mm -hmm. I think I like it without the the and a buy, but we've got two buys though. I know, but I, can, I think I can live with that. I could go either way here. Okay. I think it's good as is. That's what I'm going to vote. Okay, so let me see here. I've got an idea. Let me just. And then the other question I have is about knowledge. Do we need to have knowledge in there? What What is the knowledge that we would be working on? I could, you could, I could argue alongside you and say that cultural, it's the library, okay? <laughs> um, and, and I could entertain an argument that cultural opportunities means the library. I would think so too. Because it's, it's poetry, it's novels, it's, you know, and then also, the our robust art group that's available. So the mm -hmm. I think culture, to me anyway, encompasses all of that. Yeah, I, I like that because I was a little worried about being too restrictive, you know? So it's sort of like if it doesn't fit health, safety, and knowledge, it sure, sure will meet cultural <laughs> if, we, um, if it's something that we really think is going to, uh, uh, you know, create a thriving and resilient community. 
community. So I, I like it. You like knowledge or you like removing it? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I like knowledge. Oh. I'm I, would not, I, like, I, would not, I like removing it, actually. I wouldn't. As long as you keep cultural, I'm okay with removing knowledge. Maybe I misunderstood what you were. Oh, yeah. We have to have cultural. But the question oh, okay. is, does cultural also embrace the library knowledge? Oh, I see what you're saying. I think it does. I can, I can make that case. Okay, how about this uh, last one? I've, I've tried to remove the situation where we're saying in the city by inspiring the. Improves community health, safety, and cultural opportunities. Oh, you've, so you've made it community. Yeah, and move city to the end. Proves. Or it could even be flipped around, like improves the city's health, safety, culture, blah, 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 supporting a thriving, resilient community. If you Ooh, I, like, end, I like that, the cities. So we'll swap these out, right? Improves the cities. Uh, right? Resilient. Yeah, that, that's good. You got it. I like community at the end. Yeah, I kind of do too. Agreed. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. I'm just going to call out the only thing. Um, do we, one of the things that was in, I think, Shars at the beginning was um, uh, the, the enabling local philanthropy. Yeah. Um, so the in our the one we're working on, do we want to add in the word local philanthropy? Um, so the enabling the local philanthropy of residents and business leaders, or do we think that that's unnecessarily constraining? I, I think it's unnecessarily constraining. Because it's not like we're going to turn down a grant from a no. non-local organization. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. And Sorry, residents I, are residents are inherently local. Yeah, if the if the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation said, "Look, we want to give you a million dollars to do this in the city," we would take it. It would definitely fit within our mission, I would think. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Sorry to, not to ask the I'm question and then refute yep. it. <laughs> All right. So, right, so if, if this is our wish mission statement, do we need a motion to approve? So, is can I just read it out loud? Yeah. Okay, the Royal Oak Civic Foundation improves the city's health, safety, and cultural opportunities by inspiring the philanthropy of residents and business leaders to support a thriving, resilient community. Love it. I'll make a Sweet. motion to approve. That was a really good exercise. I it think really was. Exactly. I'll make a motion to approve. This There's highlighting is really cool. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? I hate okay. writing in committee. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> agreed, yeah, we came up with something very robust. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose that in how uh, Julie may save it. For the love of God, save, save it. Because if you ask us, what did it say? I, I don't know that I would remember. <laughs> All right, we'll close, close discussion um, and we'll uh, call the question. Those in favor of this say aye by roll call. Start with you, Shar. Alex? Aye. Pete? Aye. And I'm, I'm an aye as well. Motion passes. Yay. Yay. We got a mission. We got a mission. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Where, who, where, who made motions in second again? I made a motion. I second. OK, thanks. All right. All right, we have, uh, let's see, 20, 26 minutes left in today's meeting. Um, we are on discussing parameters of day-to-day -day operations. Although, actually, let me back up. We did a mission. We did not do a vision. So we need to, do we need to come back to a vision statement in our next meeting? Yeah, sure. Okay. I think Char's, if you, I think Char's got a great base there of what she put together. So 
is the mission is the the mission we have enough to go forward with the kickoff event? I, I think so. I think so. Okay. Alex, do you agree? I do. Okay. Um, the only thing I'm thinking about is if um, the the two other pieces that Shar had uh, the strategies and the values. Um, I you know I. I have a bias towards stating those um, publicly too. So if at some point we want to, and the reason for that is some of the, what we're gonna talk about in a moment. So I can resurface that in a second. Okay. So for clarity, um, we are, we're going to adopt what Char had said, or we're going to come back and revisit that in a, in a future meeting, which is, which is your preference? Well, we can table that aspect, but I think we've, with the mission statement, like, I, I think we can table the vision statement component. I okay. agree, I'm in agreement with everyone. Okay. All right. I think we're all in agreement on that. If there's any dissension to that, look, please say it now. Yeah. May I just have a clarification of that? Because I was writing something, so I think I missed it. So the cool. mission statement has passed as written, right? Correct. Okay. And then? Vision and tactics will be a future discussion, but is likely a good template that Shar created. So we'll just tweak that. So like a plan? Yep. So we'll revisit that and make it part of our next agenda. All right, moving on to parameters of day-to-day -day operations. And this includes a job description. Correct? Right. So it was, um, let's see. So folks, I'll open up the draft ROCF Executive Director job description. And Julie, what would make sense for structuring this conversation? Because I also want to include some of the policies since they're interrelated. Yeah, um, you know, I wouldn't mind if you take the lead on this. Yeah. If yeah, that's no all right with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, the what you see on your screen, um, and Julie, you can I think if you're sharing, you can zoom in. Um, remind me again where this came from. Is this Tom? It's me. Yeah. Um, Tom came up with this first draft. Um, I had, a, and hopefully everyone had a chance to look at it. Um, Tom, do you want to speak to any any piece about it? Uh, not in particular. I um, <clears throat> used uh, something similar that I had and um, tried to put in some elements that were relevant to um, what I know is Julie's role, what will likely be your expanding role, and it's just, it's a, a starter for discussion. That's yeah. it. Cool. Um, from a governance perspective, I looked at, you know, traditional management roles versus traditional governance roles and what we've articulated in the bylaws, um, and this felt right to me, including some very specific components, um, to your point, Tom, about um, you know, there in the italics, uh, following programs, annual giving, for development, grant writing, sponsorship, solicitation, special events. Um, everything that I saw in here was aligned, and, and, and particularly, I look at a job description for an executive director um, or president CEO as the uh, an articulation of responsibilities, but also helping delineate the differences between the board's role and the, the management role. Um, so, sorry, as far as philosophically goes, um, I, there are a couple things that I think we would need to put next to it um, to help uh, empower Julie to do her role, and that's where I was referencing some of the policies. Um, a couple things would be around, um, and a couple policies that we, one second. Of course, I'll have an excited doggo um, in this moment, a canine coworker. Um, so the, the couple of things, and we talked about these last meeting, and um, we have some drafts to, to share, but really some questions to help finalize the, the drafts that we can then share out before our next meeting, um, specifically around gift acceptance um, and kind of like financial, internal financial controls. And the reason that I'm bringing those up related to this are um, the way around empowering Julie on uh, gift acceptance policy, right? Like we don't need to have a vote every time someone sends us a check or um, as an example, the, uh, remind me, the, the firefighters union that did the food drive. Um, some of these things that could just be a matter of course as opposed to not needing a 
or, you know, reducing the, uh, the gray area on making the, the decision. Um, and then also some of the day-to-day -day things. So for instance, at the beginning of our meeting, um, you know, talking about the, the expenditure on QuickBooks, like to what extent is there a kind of like a financial, um, you know, up to what dollar amount basically is duly empowered to make decisions on kind of day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, maybe there's an annual cap or something to that, that extent. So sorry to talk about the job description, but also talk about kind of the other pieces that in my mind are, are related. Um, I'll stop talking there. Is there any questions or clarification needed on anything that I that I said or anything I missed, Julie or Tom? Nope, I think. I think okay, cool. So I guess Pete and Shar, any questions? <laughs> so no, that's okay. You know, when I looked at this the other day, um, I thought it looked great. Uh, the one thing that struck me was the title. Um, it seems to me it should be executive director of the Royal Oak Civic Foundation or something. Um, because I'm thinking, I, I don't know how the city wants to do this, but on um, Julie's business card, will it say that executive director of the Royal Oak Civic, Civic Foundation? It, in other words, if her, if this title is not to be reflected uh, as part of her official title with the city, I suppose it's fine because this, um, but what I worry is that if she has a business card that's from the city of Royal Oak and it has her title and it says, and executive director, it's executive director of what? Do you, I don't know if I'm being clear, but that. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Sorry. So two things come to mind, Pete. One is in that branding um, package we got from the students, there was a specific business card for the Royal Oak Civic Foundation with this logo and um, some designs. Um, I won't be able to pull that out because I'm uh, VPNing into my office computer right now. It doesn't allow me to share it unless I preload my other computer and I did not do that. So I don't know, Alex, if you can call that up relatively quickly or, or Char or Tom, but my thinking was that I would have separate business cards for the Royal Oak Civic Foundation. And in that case, it would have the logo on it and just the title executive director. Because I, I think there is, you know, in an effort to have a delineation between the city and this standalone foundation, that that would be another small way to show the division. And I, I'm not um, married to any way. It's just depending on, on which, depending on how it's structured, you may have to add executive director of the Royal Oak City Foundation. Mm -hmm. if, if, if the only time that your name with that title appears, um, it's, if it's only, if the only time your name with that title appears, um, uh, if it only appears on the Royal Oak City Foundation letterhead or a business card, then it's fine as it is. If it appears anywhere else on anything that's Royal Oak, then you need to show what you're an executive director of. Yeah, and that could be as a title in a newspaper article, right? Right. So we would want to be clear that it's executive director of the Royal Oak Civic Foundation. Right. Okay. All right. I have the, uh, if you want the proof, I do have it up too. So if it's helpful for anyone. Okay. Can you share? Um, um, no, not right now. The uh, participant sharing is disabled. So I think you must be a, a co host. Okay. So I guess, sorry. Are you I pulling can, it up? I can now. Thank you. Uh, back oh. IT. Do you want me to Carol, share real quick? Carol, thank you. <laughs> okay, here, I'm going to stop your sharing. The, the okay. other. The other thing that I thought of was um, in the um, like education requirements, job experience requirements, um, you know, if we're not posting that job, um, we don't necessarily need to show those just yet. Um, if we do, we need to make sure that Julie meets, you know, all of those different uh, areas. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? What we, I wouldn't want is to have the intention, which I do, uh, of keeping her on as the executive director, but then draft a, a job description that she's not qualified for. So that's just, 
you know, I don't know your background uh, intimately, so I just want to make sure that we're being mindful of that. So I have one thing I, I caught when I was reviewing this, and that's in the very first paragraph. Um, in italics, it says, it says successfully managing the following programs, and then in italics annual giving programs, and then in parentheses direct mail, memorial giving, online giving. Um, is memorial giving um, is that intended to be um, planned giving, or do we address plan? Because that's not an annual gift, but if if we pull it out of there, we need to put it somewhere else. I interpret memorial giving as gifts made um, in someone's honor or at summer mm -hmm. passing. Okay, so we then we also need planned giving mm -hmm. as one of the programs she would manage. Correct. <clears throat> I see. And then what about endowments? Do we need to name that? And I, I do wonder, should plan giving be separated out of that area because yes. it's 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 more like a major gift. It's it's going to be a contractual obligation based on um, someone's someone's will. Yes, it's completely different from annual giving. Yeah. I, I wonder if I'm not sure how to word this, but as we're kind of making all these changes, can we make a statement that's more um, you know, in planning and successfully managing, like giving, including, and then listing it so that it's not, you know, the, the way it's written here, we're at risk of, of not including something that we may want her to do in the future, but it seems like it should be, you know, Julie's really, her, this function is, you know, assisting us with fundraising or giving, including the following areas. You know, so instead of making an ex exclusive statement, it's more of an inclusive statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Tom, are you okay if we make that change? Sure. I just added operations too, since it wasn't all just all fundraising stuff plus board development. <laughs> it's okay. I'm trying to just make them in red because I forgot to click track changes, so and yeah. I can send this back to. Or but Julie, I can Julie, pass back you, to you. Julie, do you meet all of those um, like educational requirements, job requirements? I'm just curious. I don't know if you yes. get a chance to look at it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I started as the executive director of the Michigan IPL in, in um, 09. Okay. And that's where the fundraising and um, special events grant writing started. So okay. I'm going on 11 years. Right. And I have a bachelor's degree. Um, yeah, but I guess two things, master's degree preferred and CFRE preferred. Oh, yeah. Of those. Do you, you don't have those or you do? I do not. I do not have a master's degree or the uh, certified fundraising executive certification. But it's preferred. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Other discussion on the job description? Should we move to approve this? With the suggested changes? I'll make a motion to approve with the suggested changes. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. I was giving Shara the opportunity, but I'm writing. I realized she's, that for the she's trying to <laughs> we can't make her we can't make her vote and write at the same time, guys. Come on. We gotta do it. Yeah, 
All right, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, we'll, we'll call the vote. Uh, those in favor say aye, those opposed nay. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote, starting with Shar. Aye. Peter? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Thank you, Tom, for doing that. Sure. Yeah, great work. Um, I guess the next piece to related to this component, um, unless, sorry to keep the, the mic, unless Tom, you wanted to, uh, the, the couple of th the other two policies, um, one around kind of financial controls, um, how we want to handle that, um, including check signing and the receipt of gifts. And then the second piece uh, is, sorry, of course I have a spinning ball of death on my outlook when I was planning on grabbing my notes, um, a gift acceptance policy. And I think for me, these are two of the things that we should have in hand before we launch. Um, I mean, there's a lot of policies and things that we can, can come up with. Um, but for me, I think for publicly soliciting document uh, donations. Um, and sorry, I also know that we have the other uh, additional item around the insurance components. So um, why don't I pass it back to you and you can tell us where to go next. With um, with gift acceptance and third party events and all of that, uh, gift. Do we want to talk about that next, or do we want to talk about the um, the insurance items? Uh, let's do the insurance items. Um, I think gift acceptance, and we were start starting to talk about a third party policy offline yeah. between a few of us. Let's bring that forward for the full group at a future meeting when we have more time. Okay. Yeah. Could could we bring the policies back for? And by the way, I have a July eighth holding date for us. Typically, I think we weren't going to meet in July, uh, but given that we have the kickoff event and we're all kind of um, sequestered, um, I penciled that in. Um, so if that still works for you as the second Wednesday of the month, then uh, the question is, could we have the policies or recommendation at that meeting? Okay. Does everyone does it is everyone still holding a Wednesday, July eight from three to five on your calendars, or are you available? We'll start with that. Um, I can make myself available. I have it permanently in my calendar. It's on mine as well. Wait, okay, for some reason, this is July eighth. Correct. And know that, it, that if you put it on like an Outlook calendar, it may have popped up um, auto populate because that's the second Wednesday, but we typically don't meet in July. So you may not. Oh, have okay. All right. So this is called, what is this called then? Um, this is the. It would be the recurring. Typically we have July off, but we will schedule at our normal time um, a Royal Oak Civic Foundation meeting for us to discuss. Uh, the agenda we'll set up at the end of today's call. All right. So, does so July this, work? It, I think it does. If everyone, if, if you're able to make yourself, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Then we'll just need a. Um, is it? Do we have Zoom available as well? Yes. Yes, it's um, Carol uh, fixed it for us already. All right. Got it. So, all right. We'll we'll move forward. We're in new business. We're going to take them out of order. We we're going to take uh, the discussion on insurance first. We had originally put that as item number fifteen. Um, so we're going to skip over, discuss website setup and upcoming meetings, although we just discussed one. Um, so let's go through insurance. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to share screen again. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, we were given uh, two, uh, initially two options for um, insurance for the Royal Oak Civic Foundation. And um, when I asked a few questions of our contact, he um, admitted that the other uh, brand name, the Travelers Insurance, was uh, far um, set up as certainly an overkill kind of coverage. It was much more expensive. And I asked a couple questions, and he said, "Oh yeah, you know, thinking of a small uh, foundation getting off the ground, you probably don't need that one." Okay, so I just, I didn't even send that one to you. What I did send was the, the two that came from the Cincinnati Insurance Company. 
and this first one on the screen is what was sent to me. And I realized that they had this line item of nonprofit organization D and O. And so my question to him was, I thought the officers were already covered through MMRMA. And so then we had a conversation and it turns out that yes, indeed, you're covered as individuals from MMRMA, but sometimes the board as a whole, if we had a problem, the, bo the board as a whole could be um, made uh, defendant in a lawsuit. So this DNO insurance line item is if we run into trouble and uh, the defendants are all of us individually and the organization as a whole. So this component protects the, or, uh, the organizational assets if we're sued. So if we have $16,000 in our, in our bank account, then it, that's what protects, that 795 protects that 16,000. That's right. Okay. So, so when I asked him the question, he said, oh yeah, yeah, right. So since you're again, a small upcoming organization that may not be necessary. So if we uh, go to the second, quote here without the DNO, um, you can see that it was uh, pulled out and it's his uh, recommendation that, you know, in this first year or two, we probably don't need such a thing as the DNO line item to cover the whole board, the board as a whole. Um, but certainly it's up to you all about um, uh, what your risk tolerance is. Um, safer the better in my word in my world, but I'd be curious the group's uh, input. Yeah, I, I always recommend to have Tino coverage. How much money do we have in the bank? Um, we have about thirty thousand dollars. We have the fourteen. Um, initially and then uh, Robertson 16 and we plan to spend 7500 of that shortly. I mean my inclination would be to put off the DNO coverage for a year. I mean it's we're not going to be doing so much risk so much if anything that is risky at this point that that seems like a big portion of the money that we've got in the bank. That, that's my thinking also, that in this first year, we're, we're going to have little exposure. I'm wondering though by our sheer existence, whether that opens up to our exposure. Just to be really blunt about it. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I was leaning towards, towards paying for it now, recognizing that obviously we don't wanna expend unnecessary overhead, but um, the, so my thought is, okay, so what if someone challenges our existence, would the city of Royal Oak be on the hook or would we be on the hook as an organization? Well, I would think in that case, the city of Royal Oak would be since they are the sole member. It's not that our actions as a board would have opened us up to a liability. Yeah, and, and I think that's very rational thinking one of the items that our insurance guy said is um, if there is ever a situation where you're called as a party to a lawsuit, in his opinion, a good attorney would be suing everyone and everything possible. So whether or not that means there's any recourse for them, you know, that they will win or not win doesn't matter, but um, Attorneys typically go after as many options as possible. Um, although he did say, for for the organization, say we sit with fifteen thousand dollars in the um, account, and each of you and I have fifteen million dollars of coverage each from MMRMA, going after the Royal Oak Civic Foundation's fifteen thousand isn't that high on their list. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, because our numbers are so small right now, it may in some cases not be worth the hassle if they could go after each of us individually through MMRMA. I'm, 
So I'm not an expert in this, but it seems odd to me, maybe I just don't understand it, that we would have individual coverage under the city's insurance, but as a board, we don't. A board that is part of the city. I, I, I struggle with that a little bit. And maybe it's just, maybe I don't understand it, but it just seems odd. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not an expert on this. I remember when Mark brought some of the documents that um, had the language in them from MMRMA, the reason that you're covered is not that you're part of this board, but you're a volunteer of the city of Royal Oak. And I am covered because I am an employee of the city of Royal Oak. And so I don't know how the organization, you know, what standing the organization has relative to MMRMA and coverage. But it's, I, I think it's a, a good question, Pete. I didn't get the impression from the insurance guy that that, that would have any bearing, but certainly but does, I can. Does the city's city attorney's office have a recommendation for us on this? Um, I was hoping that we would have this conversation with Mark um, and his email to me was right before the meeting started. So I didn't really have time to figure out, you know, another option for that. So, I'm, so if, I, you, if you want, we can always postpone until next month, which is only two weeks away, and have some feedback from the attorney's office and also um, our connection to the MMRMA, our insurance person. I'm sure he would be open for a conversation too over the phone. I move we postpone this item until our next meeting and seek uh, advice from counsel. The, is there a second? I, I'll second. All right. Any discussion? I, I um, have, go ahead, Jay. Okay, thanks. Um, and uh, so we'll seek advice from counsel. Would you also like uh, um, Keith Potter from IBEX to be available? Or is, is. Is, yeah. is an opinion from counsel enough? Uh, honestly, I, I would like, you know, it'd be great if at the next meeting we had. Um, Mark here to, to kind of get his opinion from uh, city attorney's you know, office perspective and also have uh, the representative from the insurance company here to answer any questions and maybe explain it to us, ideally. Why don't we leave that to Mark and Julie? Bye with me too. Thank you. The only thing I was gonna raise up as a um, potential risk of delay is what the effective date would be for the insurance because we'll want it probably in place before we publicly launch. Yeah, so, so the proposed, I, yeah, the proposed policy is uh, June 1, 2020. So are there any issues with us doing that, going, approving it in July, but it back dating, it's, it's post, post effective rather? I think so because I uh, ordered this, you know, I sent a reminder email only maybe five days ago. So it was in the middle of June that they sent this with a June one date. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor to uh, table this second. Um, um, do we need a roll call vote for that? Yes. All right. I think so. All right. Let's close. If, if there's no other discussion, then. All right. Uh, those in favor say aye. Those opposed nay. We'll go through the group. Pete. Aye. Char. Aye. Alex. Aye. I'm an aye as well. All right, so we'll have that as unfinished business on our next agenda. Um, we are at our time for today's meeting. Do you want to continue for the next five minutes for any other open pieces, um, or at least develop our agenda for the next meeting and then rejoin on July, was it the 8th, I'm sorry? July 8th. July 8th. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I would say let's take well, the one thing we haven't covered is item 13 website. That's going to take more than five minutes. Um, I, I move we postpone that. In fact, well, I'll postpone it until July, but who knows if we'll get to it then. All right. Would you recommend that something we need with a public launch, though? I think it would be wise. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because I, I have a page on the Royal Oak site held for us. It just is under construction. Um, so, I mean, it could be something as simple as putting up our new logo. Um, and, and do we want to do that before the kickoff? Or do we want to keep it um, hidden until the kickoff and just have, you know, some basic um, is links for donating? You know, our mission statement now you know, maybe our legacy groups listing, and then links. It could, I mean, it could be that simple just to get going. I think we should get the website up before you make your launch. Uh, you know, media will immediately go to the website if they want to use the logo or anything like that. If they're going to use that, they'll grab that off the website. Um, as long as it's just a page at Romy.gov, as, as long as we don't yeah. have set up hosting and all of that, yeah, then that, that would be okay. Yeah. Uh, Julie, okay. do you- So we, you um, we, I'm sorry, we purchased three, two or three URLs. Remember we had the ROCF and, or maybe, maybe we couldn't get ROCF, but anyway, what we can do is we can uh, choose one of those and have it uh, direct itself to a page on Romy.gov. So what people are typing in looks like our URL, but it will feed into a Romy.gov page that we already have set up. Julie, do you get a sense of how long it would take even with the minimal page setup for the, the, the web administrator for the, the city to, to handle this for us? Um, the web administrator for this page is me. Oh. <laughs> so um, I am working on a sustainability page right now. I'm doing all of my uh, learning on that page and I think it wouldn't take too long to get something basic up and then we can talk about, you know, functionally what do we want our site to look like okay sounds good so let's let's kind of leaving that new business um why don't we end today's meeting by setting up our agenda for our next meeting if everyone agrees um, may i interject one thing here sure. um i don't i don't just i don't know if you guys looked at the chat but um richard wilson said the farmer's market is not the best for sound system um we did state of the city in both and it was easier for technology at the occ theater okay yeah. Good to know. Um, I can look into that. Uh, so we're looking at like maybe a month or so away during the week, probably. Yeah, let's shoot for a. Uh... Oh, yeah, definitely during the week. Question is, do you do it on a Friday if you want, for example, state elected officials to show up? Um, or, but then Friday can be a busy day because other organizations are dumping all of their- you know. They're off right now, the state. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. They, it probably doesn't matter there, but I, I know where you're going. Um, yeah, let me put a timetable together and just see what is yeah. reasonable given what we have to do and the time it'll take to do it. You know, that's actually, okay, sure. If you could do that um, and then um, work with your team to see what, you know, what you're thinking as far as requirements and, and that kind of thing. And then if it's all kind of spelled out, at least it gives me something to give to my team as a guide. You know, cause I know as soon as I say something, they're going to say, well, what are they looking for? And I'll, I'll get so far with it. And eventually I'll say, I'm not really sure, that, you know, as they start having more questions and we could just put our people in touch with each other. Okay. We'll do. All right. Sounds good. Um, let's create our agenda for our next meeting then. Um, our opening stays, um, series stays intact, topics and presentations. Uh, we assume that Mark will be in for that as well. We can take um, software you're going to report back as part of your director's report. So you can, you can combine seven and eight. Okay. Uh, unfinished business. Uh, why don't we come back to the kickoff event for an update? Um, we need to develop the vision statement. 
and then we are going to come back to day-to-day -day operations and specifically discuss um, gift acceptance, third-party events. Um, that could be a longer discussion, I wonder. Um, if we need a table that we can decide in next next time's meeting. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that we need third, I think third-party events is down the road from us, all, but I think gift acceptance is timely. Yeah. Uh, new the reason business. we're talking about third policy or third party is because, like for instance, the um, the, the the food drive that we talked about might fall under that category because we were accepting funds on their behalf. Does that make sense? I'm sorry to miss th have missed that. Do you mind saying it again, Alex? Yeah, the the reason that we were including third party um, fundraisers is because the food drive, for instance, might have met. Well, like depending upon how we define it, it could either be be or not be because people were giving us checks to then give to the, you know what I mean? So it's not, it's not a tried and true from the idea of someone's going out and holding a fundraiser for us, but at the same time, they are holding a, an event that people give money to us, but for them. We can take an initial review of it um, and um, figure out our time frame for approval or discussion uh, at our next that kind of meets both objectives. Um, we will need to discuss the new website setup. Um, will we, uh, the insurance discussion will go under unfinished business. Make that part of the attorney's report. That's, even, yeah, better, that's a better choice, you're right. And then anything else? I think we'll have lots to discuss, focusing mainly on the, on the kickoff and finalizing some operational elements. Any other comments on the um, preliminary agenda for ne next time? All right, if not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I can make a motion. Second. All right, those in favor say aye. aye. We'll the, oh, roll call. <laughs> if the roll call be a Pete. <laughs> Just can't get off fast enough, I guess. I know. Star? Yeah, uh, yes, I. <laughs> Alex? I. <laughs> I'm an I as well. So thank you all for your time today. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, everybody. Great work. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Carol.